Alrighty, everybody. NFL Week 4 has concluded. Week 5 video, of course. You know, the preview and stuff will be out Thursday, you know, as usual for this channel. Um, let's get right into it here. Um, Bengals. They played a close game with the Jags, I mean. But, hey, what can I say? The Bengals are technically tied to the lead in the NFC or rather the AFC North, not the NFC North. The AFC North and the Bengals, you know, they got just enough in a battle of two, you know, former national champions. In fact, the last two national champions, Trevor Lawrence and Joe Burrow. So, or rather two, nat well, not the last two national champions. Y'all get what I mean. But yeah, um, the, the, even weirder is what we found out a couple days later after that apparently Urban Meyer was spotted at a bar and a local patron a local woman at a at the bar I don't know where it was at I think it was like in Florida you know somewhere was up in here grinding on this man this man wants out of Jacksonville so bad Good lord, the, the Jags gotta go to London and, and I think in a couple weeks, so it's, it's gonna get even weirder, man. This season's gonna get even weirder for the Jags, you know? Um, Jets surprised me by winning against the Titans. Like, uh, the Titans have shown flashes of, you know, not being the team, you know, not being a really good team this year, you know? And the Jets just came in and did what they needed to do. I'm, I'm sitting here shocked. I'm laughing because most of the country was subjected to the end of this game while the um, while the Packers and Steelers and the, um, the Ravens and the Broncos kicked off, you know, in their markets. But the rest of the country, oh, the rest of the country was pissed at this result. But I mean, how can you be mad at this result? The Chets won a game when people expect them not to win a game this year. And it's crazy. Like, Titans, you know, didn't seem, to, you know, doing too much on offense. It really didn't seem like it at all. And I'm, I'm just sitting here, again, I'm just sitting here wondering what, what's wrong with the Titans. I'll try and see, you know, more Titans games down the road, but right now, I'm just sitting here confused because this Titans team was getting blasted by the Seahawks, you know, a couple weeks ago, and somehow they come back, but they lose a game like this, you know, against a team they're expected to, you know, just take care of. So remember, Jets, the Jets are the Jets. I mean, come on. But I know the Bears are feeling pretty good with Justin Fields at quarterback now. That, that defense, man forced a fumble, forced the weirdest looking fumble I've ever seen in my entire life, but then again that was more on Jared Goff than anything in the center of snap exchange, you know, just, cause I don't know, I don't know, Lions are just unlucky, man, Lions are very unlucky, Colts finally got their first win against a uh, Dolphins team that was just, you know, it's unfortunate for the Dolphins too, they're they had higher expectations coming into the season. They've been rattled by injuries themselves, you know. Really, really crazy stuff. Browns Vikings was just ugly to watch. Let me tell you, this was just offensive ineptitude on both sides of the ball. And yet, in the end, Kirk Cousins makes a bad play. You all know what happens when Kirk Cousins makes a bad play. Browns get the edge over the Vikings, you know. There was some ticky tack calls in this game. I mean, there there was some ticky tack calls in all these games, but this one was one of those, you know. Especially, you know, there was just at one point I I clearly saw Baker Mayfield or somebody somebody on Cleveland got a first down. I believe it was Baker who got a first down. Refs didn't even review that. Nobody thought to review that. Like the replays even shown that it was a first down, but you know. It is what it is. Falcons choked away another big, you know, victory. They choked it away, and they were they were up thirty to twenty two at some point, or I think it was like thirty to twenty eight, and they just choked the game away to Washington. Like Taylor Heineke, he, he's he played lights out out there. Like what what is this? What is this Falcons? What is going on with your organization? Like are are y'all bad now? Are y'all really, really bad? Because this is a really, really bad L. Like, they choked this away again. 
is this the same stuff that's been happening to the Falcons for years now? They choke this game away. How do you choke it away? You had it right there. You had a win right there, man. What happened? Can't say the same for the Texans, though. They got smacked by the Bills 40 to nothing. Just absolutely terrible performance by the Texans. You know, the Giants beat the Saints in overtime with, you know, some shenanigans at the end of that game as well. I, I'm just sitting there like, man, the Giants won a game. The Giants and the Jets won a game in the same weekend for the first time in a long time. Crazy stuff, man. Crazy stuff, you know, has happened. Can't say the same thing about those Eagles, though. The Eagles got smacked, basically, by Patrick Mahomes throwing it. <laughs> just, I mean, Patrick Mahomes is just going to be the next Tom Brady in, in, the, in, in, the, in the way that he can just amaze us each and every week. Because, I mean, this man throwing underhand, overhand passes for touchdowns, shovel passes for touchdowns. The Eagles are just... Eagles are just rough. I mean, they put up 30 points. I mean, cause Chiefs defense is still not good. But, I mean, golly. Man. Oh, my goodness. Um, Cowboys. How about them Cowboys? Javon Diggs getting them interceptions all over the place. You know, now, the, speaking now, speaking as a Cowboys fan, I wanted to tell you there were a, uh, there were a couple of bad calls in this game really bad calls. There was a fumble that should have been a fumble at one point, and these were both, you know, plays by Dalton Schultz. There was a fumble that should have been a fumble at one point, and there was a, there was a fumble that was called that was not actually a fumble, I believe. I think it was just a fumble. Yeah, I think it was just a fumble that shouldn't, you know, that was not called a fumble, but it should have been called a fumble, if that makes any sense, you know. Uh, bad officiating in this game all around. For the, most of that first, most of that first half, really, things kind of settled down late. You know, tr you know, the Panthers touted themselves as having a number one defense, and the Cowboys just worked, worked them. Zeke ran for over 100 yards. Dak was throwing it beautifully down the field, especially to the tight ends. Again, something that I've been asking, you know, to get Kellen Moore. You know, Kellen Moore is definitely, definitely improved as a coordinator over the past couple years. Sam Darnold, don't don't get your head down. You know, you know, don't don't feel down, you know. Matt Rule and company don't feel down about this. You guys still are in good position. You know, there's gonna be some big games on tap for the Panthers the next couple weeks, I can guarantee you that. And you know, they, I mean, just because, you know, this defense got, you know, picked apart doesn't mean there's bright spots. There's always bright spots. Sam Darnold was still able to run you know, for two touchdowns, and apparently, he, and I'm sitting here like, he has five touchdowns running this year? How? You know, DJ Moore was cutting up the Cowboys defense, you know, still, again, it's the Cowboys defense, you know. They force turnovers, but they give up way too many yards, way too many yards. So how about them Seahawks? They get back to 500, you know, I was a little bit worried about them, you know, and I'm uh, but, I mean, they did just enough. You know, Jimmy G is now out. You know, I, I have no idea what his injury was. And now it's Trey Lance's. It seems to be, you know, Trey Lance's turn. So now we can really get to it with Trey Lance. And, and he almost brought this team back. You know, another heart attack for the Seahawks. You know, I mean, the Seahawks played pretty good defense for pretty much most of this game until late once Lance got in. Um... It's just it's just crazy stuff out here, man. I don't I didn't catch all of this game by the way. Did not catch all of this game, only caught like the very bits to the end, so you know. Um this was this is something for the Seahawks. This is a really big win. You know, now we get to focus on Thursday night for the first time on this channel. So actually a, a Thursday night game worth watching for the first time in a couple weeks, you know, so I'll um, talk about that on Thursday. Cardinals Rams was a game I did not expect to go the way it went. I figured there would be a lot of points scored, but I didn't think it'd be a blowout like this. We're talking the Cardinals were able to pick off Stafford, you know, keep keep the Rams off the field for most of this game. They were blowing them out at one point. I mean, I know the score is only what 37 to 20 at the end of the day, but they were blowing out the Rams at one point. Took them. You know, took him to the woodshed, put him in the shredder, 
this was not a good performance by the LA Rams. Not a good performance at all, man. You know, I'm just sitting here like, man, Card's the only undefeated team in the league now? And you know the Card's got playmakers on all, on, on, especially a wide receiver. I've been tapping up the wide receivers for pretty much the entire season. I mean, they got, they got so many. You know, they have so many, and it's just like, wow. I mean, D-Hop can just make plays, you know, every, every week it seems. It seems like this man's making impossible catches and impossible plays every week. I mean, good God. I mean, Kyler Murray's been playing lights out this year, you know, just exploiting that Rams defense. You know, Ramsey couldn't really get anything done. Aaron Donald couldn't get anything done. I mean, Cardinals were just overmatching those Rams. Now another bad penalty occurred in the Steelers Packers game. I mean it was clearly not offsides. The Steelers should have had a kick return block touchdown. You know, or rather block kick return for a touchdown. But instead that didn't happen. It would have made the game a little bit closer but I don't think that would have helped too much in all honesty. You know the Steelers just looked rough on offense. This is this is not this is not a good team, man. I don't know what's going on. I think the same issues we've been saying for the past couple of weeks, you know, Big Ben is just not there anymore. He's just, he, he, he should, maybe he should have retired, you know, last year. But this whole line, the whole line is just looking real rough. I mean, I think there was one sack in this game where Ben got sacked by the turf monster, I think. Uh, I, again, I didn't watch this game at all, unfortunately. Um, so see all of it in its full glory. See the Steelers implode like this. I mean, the Steelers are just not. This is just not a good team to watch, man. This is this is sad. This is really sad. Packers continue to win, um, keeping that momentum with the Packers, you know, alive ever since they got smacked around by the Saints, you know, Week One. And I mean, I, I, I just I just don't know, man. Got to feel bad for the Broncos, though. Teddy Bridgewater got injured again, which is unfortunate. So Drew Locke had to come in. And I was sitting here like, wait, Drew Locke came in the game? Because I, I was more focused on the Cards-Rams blowout than I was the Baltimore-Broncos um, game for you know most of that, for most of that um, late window. And I'm sitting here like, why is Drew Locke in the game? What happened? And then, then that hit me. Teddy got hurt. Teddy got hurt. What a shame. And the Ravens did some petty stuff in this game. This was really petty, just to keep that streak of um, 100 yard rushing games alive. Just really petty <laughs> to end that game. You know, 20 through to 7. Not really much you could say. I mean, again, the Broncos really, that defense of the Broncos was really legit for most of this game. They, again, you know, if it weren't for the pettiness, you know, of the Ravens getting that 100 yards. You know, just to keep that streak going, they would have been under 100 yards rushing. They they really got stopped by the Broncos, forcing you know the Ravens to throw the ball. And one beautiful catch by Hollywood Brown really, you know, really made things really, really interesting. You know, so, so they said Lamar Jackson's, you know, you know presence as a passer has you know diminished. I say no, not just yet, man, not just yet. Is that? There was one throw to Hollywood that was just beautiful. Just a beautiful, beautiful throw. And we get to Sunday night and Monday night. And Monday night, I'll talk about in a second, but Sunday night, this was the game. They hyped it up. It felt. It didn't feel like they hyped it up, though. It, it really didn't feel like they hyped this game up. The return of Tom Brady to New England, and it did not disappoint. This was really Mac Jones' coming out party. Despite the fact that Richard Sherman also showed up in this game, you know, I'm, I'm sitting here like, wait, Richard Sherman's a Buccaneer now? Okay. But yeah, you know, this was a game where the Bucks, you know, were, you know, there, there was also, you know, rain, just a lot of rain in this game, you know. I mean, this was, this was a game that was sloppy for most of it, you know, you, you had, you had Mac Jones balling out. That, that was the main thing, really. You know, Tom Brady obviously got a big, you know, drive at the end. And unfortunately for the Patriots, you know, it, what happened? Remember a couple years back when the Buccaneers, you know, had good old Nick Folk, and you know, he missed a bunch of kicks, you know, against 
the Patriots in that game on Thursday night. Well, the same thing happened here, although it was the loudest doink I've ever heard in my entire life. And it was too, it was a it was a um, field goal that was just too long. You know, field was like 50 something yards. You know, most kickers have proven that they can make you know 50 yard kicks, but I think it was like 56 or something like that. And it was just too long, and it just doinked the loudest doink I've ever heard in my entire life, man. And that's how the Patriots lose this game. You know, and I thought you know at one point I thought they were giving the the Bucks too much time. You know, at one point because the Patriots had a good drive going, they got they got their points, and they and it seemed like oh okay they're gonna give Brady all this time. And, you know, again a beautiful beautiful game in all the worst ways because I mean you know it, it was just rough for most of it in all honesty. Like, nobody could get anything going, nobody could do anything, and you know finally once you know finally once stuff started happening, stuff started happening, and it proved to be a beautiful ending for the return. So the Bucks continue to win um, there. And the Raiders have fallen, leaving the each, leaving the Cardinals as the only undefeated team. Chargers really whooped up on the Raiders for most of this for the first half especially. They were up twenty one to nothing at the end of the first half. And the Raiders just could not seem to do anything, you know, they were trying to, you know, go, you know, go the old um, West Coast approach with it, trying to run the ball, trying to milk clock, trying to get, you know, good drive sustained, but that didn't work out. So finally, in the second half, it finally clicked for the Raiders. Oh, go to Ruggs, go to Renfro, go do something, get get a deep catch or something, get get a deep, get a deep fade, get something, and you know that finally worked. But it was a little bit too late. Once the Chargers said, "We gonna do the same thing. We gonna do, we gonna do a real good drive." You know, with Austin Eckler, you know, leading the charge, and you know, I, I know, I know, I, I know. I'm sitting here like, oh man, Raiders. What happened to that defense? You know, what happened to this defense in this game? They were getting cut up by Austin Eckler for most of this game. They were getting. I mean, this was this was a. This was a game where I was just expecting a barn burner, you know, but I didn't get that. Instead, it was a, for the most part, it was a blowout. Derwin James got the game ceiling interception on Derek Carr. Why does Derek Carr always look so mad on the sidelines? I'm telling you, this man always looks mad when he comes when he goes to the sidelines. Like earlier, like early in the game, when the when the uh, when the Raiders were down like 14 to nothing, I'm sitting here like, what? Why is he looking like that? Why does he look so mad? Like man, this is crazy stuff. But yeah, we learned a lot. You know, just to wrap this up here, we learned a lot in week four of the NFL season, and I gotta tell you, a lot of parity this year. A lot of parity. You know, again, I mean, I know this is the NFL. It's any given Sunday, but I'm telling you, this has been. This has been a weird year so far, similar to college football, just one of the weirdest years, you know, fans coming back and stuff like that. This has been one of the weirdest years I've ever seen talking, you know, NFL. I've been an NFL fan for nearly 20 years now, and this has just been the weirdest type thing, you know, weirdest season I've seen so far, you know, where everybody, everybody, <laughs> Everybody has those expectations, and those expectations have been shattered completely by the way the season has gone. Whew. Whew. Man, to, to wrap this up, um, for real this time, to really wrap this up, um, again, I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad we got another good week for NFL football to experience, and I'm gonna get I'm gonna get more into it. We got 14 weeks of the season left and a lot of games. A lot of games. You know, there's 272 games this year, and there's a lot there's a lot on the line now. There's a lot on the line as we get into really the really the month where teams start to separate from one another. You know, some teams start to separate, some teams start to, you know, lose ground, and some teams start to look like trash. You know, looking like they're about the tank. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much all I got to say. 
Y'all take care. Have a good night. Have a good rest of your week. See you for the college football preview tomorrow and the rest of the videos throughout the week, as you all know. Take care, everybody. Good night.